This is the Rode X XCM50. Now, I got this mic for free from Rode, not because I'm some big influencer that they want to send free stuff. It's because I paid for the Unify software on the Black Friday sale. So I only paid a dollar for it, but then they then made it free for everybody. So they're like, since you paid for it, here's a free microphone. So this video is going to be talking about this microphone, but more importantly, it's going to be comparing Wavelink by Elgato, which is what I have been using for my audio solution, basically, um, and the Unify software from Rode. So let's get into that. So I posted a short about this mic last week, and that was just sort of the unboxing with it. So what comes in the box is obviously the mic itself, the USB cable, so it is a USB mic, and it's a USB-C to USB-C cable, but it's quite long, so it's pretty good. And then it also comes with a headphone extension cable, as you can see right here. This is not my headphones plugged in. This is the extension cable that comes with it. So then you can run it along an arm and then plug in your headphones or speakers or whatever from there. And when Rode X was launched, it's sort of a sub company uh, from Rode, uh, they came up with two mics. The XCM50, which is this one, and then the XDM100, which is their dynamic mic, which looks a lot more like a Rode Procaster or something like that. So that would have been the one that I would have got if I had a choice, but this is the one they were sending out for free. So, And the one big downside to the mic itself is the fact that it's condenser and the way I use these mics on a boom arm is I kind of want there to be a lot of rejection of outside sound like a dynamic mic has, whereas the condenser mic, it will pick up other sounds a lot more easily than a dynamic mic. It also came with this little tripod, which is pretty handy. I'm using it to record the audio from this camera right now. So as an overview, Wavelink and Unify are both audio mixing software targeted more for streamers and gamers. So they do have sub mixes, so you can have a mix into your own headphones and then one you send out to stream because that is not, you don't always want your stream hearing exactly the same as what you're hearing. So it's good that they both have that. Before we talk about each one individually, I'll just explain basically what they both do. And they're both very similar in what they do. So basically you have a bunch of channels which can be assigned to whatever audio devices you have. So you can have physical devices such as microphones and then you can have all different channels within your system so you can route your browser or the game or the music that you're playing through the different apps. So you can route the app itself to a particular channel in both of these interfaces and they both work pretty well for that. You can just route whatever, wherever. And then you can select the different volumes and different effects that you have on each channel in each submix. So as you can see on the Wavelink one, there's actually two volume sliders and you can have different volumes. As you can see for some of them, I have different volumes for the monitor or the headphone channel and the stream channel. You can also apply different effects or have one muted for one channel and not the other. So I usually don't have my microphone playing back into my ears because there's a slight delay but I obviously want the microphone to be heard by, this, by the stream. So it's good to be able to have that off for my ears, but on for the stream. And then you can also select which audio output you have. For example, speakers, headphones, whatever, any, any output device that your computer has, you can use that for. So now let's talk about the pros and cons of each. Now, starting with Unify, which is the new one, and I haven't really used it nearly as much, but there's some reasons why. So starting with the pros of Unify, we have better built-in VSTs. So VSTs are the effects that you can put onto a channel, particularly microphones, and that's what you can see here, the noise gate compressor, and then these last two, the Oral Exciter and Big Bottom, they're more just boosting the highs and lows a bit. All of this can be adjusted if you just click advanced, you can you can do all that. But the built-in noise gate and compressor work really well, whereas in Wavelink, initially there were no built-in VSTs, then they added VST support for third-party VSTs, and then they added a couple of their own, which the EQ and noise reduction that they have work really well, but that's all they have. So you do need third-party VSTs if you want a compressor or a limiter or anything like that. 
Another benefit to Unify is you can have more than one submix. For example, this is the stream submix right here. And then we actually have five submixes. So you could, you could set up all of these for different scenarios. Chat is be, would be what you would put as an output to Discord or game chat or something like that. For example, if you want to put in music or whatever, or maybe the sound effects actually, the sound effects channel that is built in to this, which is another small pro, I guess. It's not that big of a deal, but it's there. And you can also have different mixes for your headphones versus your speakers or for recording as well. That's another pro. Yeah, built-in recording on this. It's just a record button that you can just press and it records. I haven't really done any recording with this, but I would imagine it would work pretty well. Once you've recorded something, you can then view it in here. You can skip through it and everything and then export it in whatever, whatever format and quality you want. So that's the pros of Unify. Let's go over to the cons because these are the reasons that I'm not going to be using Unify in the future. Now, the biggest reason that I haven't used Unify before I got this mic is I actually, I tried to, but you can't use the headphone output channel unless you have one of these microphones. So I have both headphones and speakers plugged into my computer and I use them both. I switch between them somewhat regularly. But using Unify, I couldn't use both of them. I would have to manually switch which output it was going to every single time I switched between them. So it didn't seem worth it to me because it's very easy to do so on Wavelink and with my stream deck and everything like that. So I just couldn't use headphones and speakers at the same time without one of these mics. And then once I did get this mic, it's a bit easier, but it's not ideal. What I mean by that is you have to use the mouse to control and it just takes more clicks to change things like that. Like I can just mute the headphone output, but then I have to go and unmute the monitor output. So it takes two clicks to switch between them. Minimum two clicks to switch between them. Whereas on Wavelink, I press one button on my stream deck and it's switched. And that's something I'll get into in the pros of Wavelink. So another con uh, we have, this is actually a con for both of them, is Windows just breaks audio stuff all the time and it's super annoying. Particularly Windows Sleep, like when I put my computer to sleep and wake it up again, audio is just broken. It just doesn't work properly. I often have to restart Wavelink or Unify, it doesn't matter what audio software I'm using, I have to restart it because Windows Sleep just makes it stop working. So this is sort of the biggest con for the Unify system is you cannot use XLR microphones. I have two XLR microphones that I usually use on stream and plugged into my computer. And if I use this system, one, this would be replacing one of them. That's fine. I would be okay using a USB and an XLR mic. But I can't even use my shotgun mic that I have plugged into my Rode interface. And this is one of the changes that they made when they made it free, is you had to use a Rode X mic to get all of the benefits of the software, but you could still also use Rode mics. And it would still work. You just wouldn't get the full effect. I think that just includes the VSTs that you just can't use on those extra mics. Don't quote me on that though, I'm not 100% sure, but I know there is limited usability with other Rode mics. I can plug in one of my US, my other USB mics, either my wireless mic or the video mic go to. Both of them work fine as a, a USB input on Unify because they're USB, so any USB Rode mics work fine, but XLR, just not gonna happen. So that's one of the big reasons why I'm not gonna be using Unify in the future. And then the last like little annoying thing is, as you can see on the screen here, this is not a regular window. I can't make it any bigger. I can't snap it to the sides, okay? Whereas on this one, if I snap to the side, it'll snap to the side or wherever, or I could snap it to whatever using other things. I can't do that with this window. All right, so that's Unify. There's some good things, there's some bad things, but now let's talk about Wavelink. Starting with the bad things, there's really only one main con that I have thought of uh, with Wavelink, and it's the exact same con for Unify. The Windows just doesn't like audio, and it breaks it all the time. All right, so the biggest pro for Wavelink is because Wavelink and Stream Deck are both made by Elgato, the integration is pretty seamless. So all of, so there's, there's a Wavelink plugin for Stream Deck. It's very easy to use and there's a bunch of different stuff you can do with it. 
very customizable. So you can mute mics, you can change volumes, you can turn on and off effects, you can change your monitoring device. There's a lot of things you can do with the Stream Deck and that's why it's really useful to use this. So then I never actually have to open this software unless I'm streaming because I like to be able to see it and see what's happening. But if I'm not streaming, I'll just use the Stream Deck buttons to... Honestly, mostly, mostly what I do is just change between my headphones and my speakers. You can also very easily switch between which mix you're hearing. On the right over here, you can see the, the green ear on this one. So currently coming through my headphones is nothing because we're monitoring the monitor mix and all the mics are muted for the monitor mix. But if we switch over, I can do it here or I can also do it with my Stream Deck. And then now I can either click on this and now we're hearing through the headphones what the stream is hearing. And then I can also do that with the Stream Deck. So it's very easy to do. The next reasonably big pro for Wavelink is you can use as many mics as you want and it doesn't care what brand they are or how it's connected to the computer. As you can see on here, I have four mics set up. There's the Wave XLR interface, which I usually have my dynamic mic plugged into. We have my Rode AI-1 interface that I have my shotgun mic plugged into. So there's two USB interfaces with XLR mics plugged into them. Then this is... This third channel is my camera plugged in via USB, so it can take the audio directly from that with, if I have a mic plugged into that. It's currently not plugged in, that's why it's grayed out. And then this fourth one is actually just this microphone. So I can use this microphone in Wavelink, but I can't use any of my other microphones except these ones in Unify. You can also just have more total channels in Wavelink. You can have up to nine channels, and it doesn't matter what they are. So you can have as many mics as it allows. I think you can only do up to like four or six mics because it uses the auxiliary channels on top of the mic channels. But in total, you can have nine channels of inputs and that's plenty for, for at least what I do. I can have a voice chat one, a music one, a game one, a system one, and then I can have you know up to four microphone channels as well. So with all that said, what are my plans for the future regarding audio at my computer? Now, because I have this mic now, and it's also about twice, I'm pretty sure it's it costs about twice as much as the AT2040 that I normally use, the dynamic mic that I normally have here. But what I'm going to do is switch fully back to Wavelink. I've already done that. I'm using Wavelink. But I'm going to keep using this mic for a little bit, see how it goes on stream, and see sort of what background noise it picks up, and if I like the sound better than the dynamic mic. So it'll be more or less just sort of testing over the next few streams using this mic. And then maybe at some point I'll go back to my dynamic mic, who knows. And what I will also try is running Unify in the background so I can use the VSTs built into this mic, even though it's going through Wavelink. So pretty sure you have to have Unify running to use the VSTs in the mic. So that's kind of annoying. I'll see how it works with it running in the background and if it tries to take over Windows stuff. Otherwise, I'll just fully disable it and then just use the VSTs I have in, in Wavelink. But the biggest issue with this so far compared to the AT2040 dynamic mic is it picks up that sound. Whereas dynamic mic, it will not really pick it up in any realistic scenario. So that's an overview of Elgato Wavelink and Rode X Unify and the Rode X CM50. I don't know whether to say Rode X XCM50 or the Rode XCM50 because they put X at the end of the name and then the start of the name of the mic. It's, I don't know, Rode, what are you doing? But yeah, that's the video on this. Another audio video this is the first audio video in a while. Um, let me know what you think about the mic. Let me know what you think about the software, press the buttons down there, and then uh, we'll see you next time. Come catch the stream sometime. Okay, bye. Buds, stop. 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 This is why I don't film during the day. Because the birds...